Place your right hand on my waist. Well? Harry Potter might be a childhood highlight, but as adults, we can't deny that Hogwarts could get pretty inappropriate. Like that time when Moaning Myrtle was watching Harry take a bath? Or how about Romilda accidentally forcing Ron to fall in love with her? There's plenty more awkwardness in the wizarding world, so we're hopping on a broom and flying down memory lane to recap the most inappropriate moments from all eight movies. And if we're deducting points for misbehaving, well, looks like Gryffindor isn't winning the cup this year. Take my hand. Movie Ginny and Harry could never quite compare to the couple's amazing chemistry in the books, but they did try to find random moments to be together, and some of them were weird, awkward, and downright suggestive. In Half-Blood Prince, Ginny runs into Harry on the stairs and bends down to tie his shoe? Was that supposed to be romantic? It's just as bad as the moment in Deathly Hollows Part 1, where Harry zips Ginny's dress for her after staring at her back for a little too long, and then gets interrupted by George. Morning. We get that they wanted to sneak away for some alone time, but maybe the actors should have cast a little incendio spell to really get the sparks flying. That happens to me, my sister. Speaking of Harry and Ginny, why did Ron always have to get into the middle of things and make it super awkward? Okay, maybe Harry wasn't respecting the bro code by dating Ron's sister, but what's done is done. In this scene in Half-Blood Prince, Ginny tries to share a mince pie with Harry after asking him if he trusts her for some reason. Was she thinking of suddenly poisoning him and feeling guilty? But awkward Ginny aside, Ron comes in and quite obviously sits between the couple, making the whole situation even more uncomfortable. Pie? Not for me, no. Come on, Ron. We know what you're trying to stop them from doing, but let them live a little. If she looked over here and saw you snogging me, would you expect her to get up and leave? Thankfully, Ron has had his own romantic relationships to keep him distracted from messing with Harry and Ginny's. And of course, Hermione is our favorite. We don't get to see them for long in Deathly Hollows Part 2, but we're pretty sure we know what they got up to when they went to destroy the Horcrux in the Chamber of Secrets. After succeeding and being soaked in water, the magical couple decides to have a little makeout break as a reward for a job well done. But by the time they get back to Harry, they're more flustered than they should be after just a kiss. What else did they get up to down there? Just how many secrets is that chamber hiding? I think I love her. The idea of using a love potion is so messed up. It's even more messed up that the students get to see it being made in potions class. And much worse, that they can simply buy a bottle in Hogsmeade. The girls seemed super into the idea of casting a love spell on an unsuspecting wizard, but Romilda Vane was the one who actually went for it. She gives Harry chocolates laced with love potion, but Ron ends up eating them instead and falling immediately and irrationally in love with her. I'm in love with her. Oh, all right, fine, you're in love with her. Have you ever actually met her? Love potions are banned at Hogwarts, but how are they even still legal in the wizarding world? Forcing someone to fall in love with you and go as crazy as Ron did should be right up there with the unforgivable curses. Good luck today, Ron. I know you'll be brilliant. Ron didn't need Felix Felicis to get lucky in the Half-Blood Prince. When he wasn't eating bespelled chocolates, he was busy obsessing over Lavender Brown. We're just going to go ahead and say that their entire relationship is disturbing. Even Ron admits at one point that they made out so much his lips were chapped. We didn't really need to know that, Ron. My lips are getting chapped, look. We'd also rather forget the couple's weird pet names for each other, like One One, and how they were always all over each other. But thankfully, all it took was Ron saying Hermione's name in the infirmary for Lavender to run off and for us to realize he was probably thinking of snogging her every time he kissed Lavender. If I were you-know-who, I'd want you to feel cut off from everyone else. We don't get to find out a whole lot about Luna's love interests compared to her friends, but we think we found a hint about what Looney Lovegood's really into. It's all hidden in the way she treats Harry's broken nose in Half-Blood Prince. After Draco stomps on Harry's face and leaves him on the train, Luna finds him and offers to fix that pesky nose, but not before commenting that the broken nose suits him because it makes him look more devil may care. Once she fixes it, she just says he looks exceptionally ordinary. It's a compliment Harry welcomes, but we're on to you, Luna. You're totally into the tough guys. We wish that she would have been around in Goblet of Fire because she would really have hit it off with Victor Crumb. <laughs> Come to do something else with me. 
The award for most inappropriate character might just go to Moaning Myrtle, who spends her days lurking in the Hogwarts bathrooms. But her most inappropriate moment by far happens in the Goblet of Fire, when Harry catches Moaning Myrtle, watching him take a bath with the golden egg. What's even weirder is that she admits to watching prefects take baths all the time. And when she tries to take a peek in the water, we're pretty sure it's not the egg that she's looking at. It's messed up. But ghosts gotta do something for fun, right? They won't know which Harry Potter is the real one. Waking up naked in school is a reoccurring nightmare for most people, but poor Harry kinda had to live through it in real life when his friends and teachers polyjuiced themselves to look like him in Deathly Hollows Part 1. We know how important it was to get Harry to safety, but it's awkward just thinking about him standing around while his friends undress themselves while looking just like him. They can basically see and, um, feel everything. We have a feeling that everyone might just have avoided eye contact for a couple of days after this one. Miley, come out, we've got loads to tell you. Go away! Okay, so this is awkward, but how much of Hermione turned into a cat when she messed up with that Polyjuice potion in Chamber of Secrets? We've realized that Polyjuice is a pretty inappropriate invention in the first place. Sure, it's unethical to pretend to be someone else, but it's also just really awkward. When Hermione turns into a cat, we see that she's covered in fur and has ears and a tail, but who knows what the rest of her looked like when she was half feline. And if we were her, we probably would not have looked too closely to find out. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. The Marauder's Map is a useful tool for a wizard trying to save the world, or if you're just trying to find out where your peers are hooking up around the school. If this thought crossed your mind, then you're not alone, because in the credits for Prisoner of Azkaban, you can totally see two students getting busy in the corner of the map. Does that mean that Fred and George could have been using the map to peep in on people's scandalous school behavior? Everyone? Everyone. Where they are, what they're doing, every minute of every day. Brilliant! Speaking of the Marauder's Map, Fred and George must have noticed that Peter Pettigrew, aka Scabbers the Rat, was always in Ron's dormitory. Actually, he was always in Ron's bed. It's nice of the twins to let their brother do whatever he wants, but they should have at least done a little research when they didn't recognize the name Pettigrew as a fellow Gryffindor. Their brother could have been sleeping with the enemy. And he was. Just not in the way they probably thought. Harry, I'm, I'm sorry, but someone's already asked me. Ginny and Harry are endgame, but Harry did have a short fling with Cho Chang that was in very poor taste. He made out with her in the Room of Requirement when she was literally still crying about losing Cedric's. Cedric, Cedric did know this stuff. He was really good. Honestly, maybe you should have cast Lumos because you've got to be blind and wandering in the dark not to notice that Cho wasn't over Cedric yet. He could have at least waited until the end of the school year. I'm sure Harry's kissing was more than satisfactory. Harry's worst kiss wasn't with Cho, though. It was definitely with Hermione. That whole makeout scene in Deathly Hollows might have been a trick, but it was still really awkward to see these two best friends wrapped up passionately in each other's arms. We know the whole image was meant to upset Ron, but did they both really have to be naked? If we were disturbed by the vision, just imagine how Ron must have felt. Well, half-brother, really. He's completely harmless, just like I said. Little high spirit it is all. Hagrid's half giant, which seems pretty straightforward, but when you think about it a little more, it's kind of hard to explain, and we're happy J.K. Rowling never went into more detail. Hagrid mentions in the movies that he's only half giant on his mother's side. That means his dad had to get lucky with a giant. Did they use the Engorgio spell to make that possible? Are there other tricks for magical interspecies relations? See, even the questions are inappropriate. We rest our case. You're a bit more along than I would have expected, particularly right in the middle. We all clapped when Hagrid finally gave Dudley what he deserved and cursed him with a little pig's tail in the very first Harry Potter movie. But we can't help but wonder, what did Dudley do with the tail? It must have made for a pretty awkward doctor's visit. It must have been even more awkward to live with the tail for a few days. Between Dudley's tail and Aunt Marge being blown up like a balloon, the Dursley's family doctor must think the entire family are medical marvels. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I rate the front page. Gilderoy Lockhart is probably one of the cruelest Harry Potter characters ever, even though he acts like a stuck-up Prince Charming. When he was in the chamber with Ron and Harry, he just casually came up with the idea of messing with their minds so that he could come out of the whole situation as a hero. That's completely messed up, and one of the worst things a Hogwarts professor has ever tried to do. We don't really feel bad that he lost his memory in the process. Unless you wish to poison him, and I assure you, I would have the greatest sympathy if you did. 
Speaking of terrible professors, we gotta admit that Snape falls into that category. We quote always, all the time. After all this time, always. And it still brings tears to our eyes. But Snape was definitely not the best teacher. He might have fallen in love with Lily, but then terrorized her son a lot more than was necessary to keep him safe. Plus, he spent his whole life obsessed over a girl who he didn't even really know that well. Snape's devotion to Lily might be what redeemed him in the end, but it also makes it obvious that Snape never really devoted his life to anything but Lily's memory. And that level of obsession is a lot more inappropriate than it is romantic. Serious. Come on! Getting your soul sucked out sounds like a terrible way to go, which is probably why it's the perfect punishment for a Dementor to dole out. But the whole concept of a fatal kiss is a really creepy concept. Imagine the moment before your soul is taken away, you have to make out with a scary cloaked creature with a really gross mouth? You'd think that they'd have a less intrusive way of punishing their worst criminal. Ooh, may we suggest some sort of potion? I know what that is. That's an invisibility cloak. Another inappropriate wizarding invention is the invisibility cloak. It's a great gift, but it also encourages mischief. Who says that Moaning Myrtle's the only one peeping on prefects? With an invisibility cloak, anyone can spy on anyone. But who knows how he could use that cloak when no one's paying attention. Turn to page 394. Why Hogwarts doesn't have a reproductive health class? We don't ever see the students taking math classes or any of that normal stuff, but whether you're a wizard or a muggle, you still have hormones you gotta deal with. It's obvious that the students at Hogwarts are keeping busy in their spare time, so they should probably have some sort of class to teach them about staying safe. Which inappropriate moment was the funniest? Are there any others that you spotted and wanted to share? Let us know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you had fun, and subscribe to the things for more magical content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.